What's up guys, Mikkel here, and in this video, we need to talk about a brand new narrative being pushed by Fox Business right now, which is that the SEC and Bill Hinman did not violate any laws when Bill Hinman gave Ethereum its free pass. Guys, in this video, I want to show you what John Deaton has to say about this, because guys, it's going to make it more clear to you than ever that Bill Hinman and the SEC 100% violated ethics laws when they gave Ethereum its free pass. Guys, make sure to stick around for that. You are not going to want to miss it. Guys, at the end of this video, I'm also going to show you some very interesting connections between Ripple and some of the most powerful people in the entire world. Guys, throughout this entire SEC case, we have questioned how a company like Ripple, who is doing so much good for the world and has so many high-level people on its board, managed to get sued by the SEC. Guys, in this video, I want to show you some things that are going to make you think that this entire case was all a stage to usher in regulations. Guys, make sure to stick around to the end of the video to see that. It is something you are not going to want to miss. Like always, guys, your support means so much to this channel. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below and turn on bell notifications. These three simple things go such a long way in helping this channel grow, and it really does mean so much to me. If you guys ever need a good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange, Uphold, down in the description below. Guys, Uphold has been adding a whole bunch of awesome new features, and if you do not have an account yet, I highly suggest you make one using the link in the description of this video. With that said though guys, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, I want to start out this video and quickly go over a brand new project I just started getting into and that is Gala Games. Now guys, Gala Games is a project that recently went through some controversy. There was some hack on some bridge that did something crazy with the price of their token. But from what I understand and after talking to a lot of people involved in this project, it doesn't sound like it was actually on them and it was actually on a bridge they were using. So guys, it sounds like to me Gala still has a very good reputation coming out of the kind of controversial event that happened. Now, the main reason I actually got into Gala was because they just acquired a gaming studio with over 20 million unique users. And guys, this is absolutely awesome and something that companies like Gala need to be doing. My biggest skepticism in a lot of these gaming cryptocurrency projects is that a lot of them have cool ideas, but the games aren't actually that fun. The fact that Gala is acquiring a studio with 20 million users is absolutely massive because it's going to create demand for their game. And guys, just scrolling through some of the games they're releasing, they look really cool. They look really good. And this is just a project that I have been kind of watching from the sidelines for a while now. And I'm finally starting to make a move on it because I really like what I'm seeing. Now guys, when you take a look at the price of the token, you can take a look at it from two ways. Some people see this and think it looks terrifying. I see this as an amazing opportunity. Guys, this thing looks like it is close to the bottom. Who knows where the bottom's actually going to be. But guys, it looks like the pace at which this thing has been going down is dropping off a lot. And it looks like to me this thing is at least pretty close to a bottom. This is the main reason why I decided to start building a position now. Now guys, this isn't going to be any massive position. It's not even going to come close to something like XRP for me. This is a lot more speculative, but guys, it's still something I'm interested in. That's why I want to develop a small position. Now for me, when I saw the price down this much, I was just like, this is the perfect time to start doing this. I was watching Gala all the way back through here during this massive pump and all through this stuff here. I didn't touch it just because it felt like I was really late to the party. I didn't want to get involved in something this late. But guys, now that we came back to these levels, it just seems like an easy time to build a small position and just get involved in a project that I think has some real long-term potential. Now guys, like I said, a lot of these gaming crypto projects are speculative because no one knows if their games are actually going to be played. There has been so many fun games made by different game developers that just no one picked up on. Now, I think them buying the gaming studio is a huge step towards doing that because they're going to have a lot of users already on the gaming platform, and then they're just going to be introducing their games to that platform, and that's one of the reasons I got really bullish. But guys, either way, just something to be looking at. I thought this was pretty cool too because I kind of got to show you guys how I look at a project. I like to look at the fundamentals. I like to analyze what's happening. I like to analyze the path towards mass adoption. And then I like to look at the price of the token. I like to make sure I'm getting in at a good price. I don't like to get into things late. I don't like to get into things when they're already pumping. I like to get in when I see a nice base formed. I can build my position over time. And guys, I'm not in a rush. I'll build slowly. And as I see the fundamentals develop, I'll buy more. 
just something to consider. And if you guys like this little segment, definitely let me know because I'll do more things like this. But guys, I want to move on and talk about a pretty unfortunate 180 that happened earlier today. We had Charles Gasparino kind of going on a rant saying that he thought that Ethereum got a free pass and Ripple didn't because essentially Ethereum only had one ICO where Ripple has been selling their tokens for a while. Well, guys, not only is this completely wrong, I mean, not only did Ethereum have an ICO, but they've been selling their tokens for as long as Ripple has. But guys, it really makes no sense because there is no research behind it. Now, Charles went on to say and kind of doubled down on his weird conspiracy theories that Hinman didn't actually ever do anything illegal when he gave Ethereum a free pass. And guys, I was just reading these things and I was like, what are you talking about, man? We've had John Deaton literally pull documents from the SEC directly telling Bill Hinman, hey, Bill, you meeting with Simpson Thatcher is a violation of your ethics and is a criminal conflict. Stop meeting with them. And then John Deaton went on to prove that Hinman did not stop meeting with them. He kept meeting with Simpson Thatcher even after the ethics department directly told him, hey, Bill, you need to stop doing this or you're in a criminal violation of your statute. Now, guys, I don't know how you argue with this. We literally have direct proof that Hinman broke the law. So guys, I don't know why Charles is going on this rant. It seems completely pointless to me. I think he's just in his own head stuck in this thing that he created. And guys, it's so far from the truth. And I thought it was pretty funny because John Deaton actually responded to this. He said, Charlie and I are grown men who can sit down and have a whiskey. And I can say I 100% disagree with you. As a former federal prosecutor, I am confident I could convict Hinman of violating criminal conflict laws. If Charlie says he needs more, that's okay. We're still cool. And guys, John Deaton nails it right here. There's not that much to speculate on here. Hinman obviously violated some level of rules at the SEC because his own ethics department was saying, hey, you violated these rules in a criminal manner. Either way, guys, I don't really think this means much. I think Charlie just doesn't really know what's going on with this case. I think he hears stuff from the SEC. I think he has some sources there and just automatically listens to what they say and just run with it. But guys, either way, I just wanted to point this out. It was getting a lot of controversy in the XRP community. And guys, overall, it's kind of a huge nothing burger. Hinman clearly violated the rules. Don't listen to people like this. John Deaton is on top of it. And if John Deaton says that he thinks he could prosecute Hinman with 100% certainty, guys, I would much rather be on John Deaton's side here than Charlie Gasparino. And guys, I just want to quickly show you this clip of Jimmy Valley talking about why it's such a big deal that the SEC did sue Ripple. I think he had a great summary of it right here, and he kind of hits on some points that I don't normally talk about. So listen up closely to this. For those of you guys who don't know, Jimmy Valley was a high-profile securities lawyer. I know he has a lot of controversy around him with his buyback and stuff but guys he says a lot of very very important things outside of the buyback so just ignore that listen up to this because this is very interesting if we could go back in time and the sec didn't sue ripple even with the ethereum free pass speech where you know him and went on stage at the yahoo summit crypto summit and, and declared bitcoin and ethereum weren't securities but basically left everybody else in you know the opaque zone that would have been fine i think uh, i think xrp could have continued to flourish and let the free market decide which is the best asset to use i mean we do live in a free market economy right it was really when the regular regulatory capture process occurred and they sued Ripple and created this whole kind of confusion and cloud on title. And then everybody promptly left. Jay Clayton left the next day. Bill Hinman was leaving right around that time. It smelled bad. It looks bad. They were warned in advance by Joseph Grunfest, who's a very established former SEC commissioner himself, very established securities law professor at Stanford Law School. So guys, I think Jimmy Valley makes some great points here, especially when he talks about the free market stuff. Guys, it was one thing for the SEC to give Ethereum a free pass, and don't get me wrong, that was weird enough because XRP had been around longer. So for the SEC to be coming out of nowhere and saying, oh, Ethereum is decentralized enough to not be a security, but all these other cryptocurrencies, don't worry about those, we're only talking about Ethereum right now. That was weird enough, but a lot of people looked at that and said, oh, well, the SEC probably just wants us to look at this and say, what tokens are like Ethereum? And that likely means those aren't securities either. Well, guys, little did we know the SEC was going to turn around and sue Ripple out of nowhere and make the absurd claim that XRP itself was a security. And guys, that's when many people, including Jimmy Valley, said, 
You know what? There is something more going on here. This looks like the SEC is trying to pick winners and losers, and I could not agree more with him. Now, guys, with all that said, I think it's so interesting to look at some different perspectives out there because someone like Jimmy Valley, someone like John Deaton, are fully convinced that this case was brought against Ripple to try to slow them down and try to pick winners and losers in the market. But guys, other people like Darren Moore Jr., who is one of my favorite researchers in this space, have completely different views on why this case took place. Listen up to this. Ripple will partner with the government post-crypto regulations like Google partnered with the NSA. That's why Rosie Rios, Michael Barr, Craig Phillips, Anya Manuel, Susan Athey are board members. They see the writing on the wall. Career politicians embedded into the government. And guys, what he is pointing out here, and if you guys don't know all these names, Rosie Rios is a former treasurer, Michael Barr is former Federal Reserve, Craig Phillips is former BlackRock, Anya Manuel is actually someone who is apparently very high up in foreign relations, including with China and India, and then Susan Athey is a high-profile attorney. Guys, these are not people you find at random companies. These are not people you find at a company who is actually in trouble with the SEC. And guys, I just think it's so cool to look at these different perspectives. Because you read these names, you read these people who likely know exactly what's going on with this case, know the entire story of why this case was filed, and they still chose to go to Ripple. So you look at things like this, and it's just like, oh, well, we just looked at something that made it seem like this entire case was to slow down Ripple, to try to pick winners and losers in the market, to try to give Ethereum a free pass, and then you see something like this, and you're like, these people know this case isn't real. They know Ripple's going to win. Why else would they have gone there? And guys, you look at something like this, and it just seems like this case was to front-run Congress to try to get a decision through the court that XRP was not a security, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, Ripple would be able to dominate the cryptocurrency market in the U.S. because they would have the only cryptocurrency that had a judicial ruling proving that it wasn't a security. Guys, either way... Hopefully one day we'll know which one actually happened, but I find this stuff so interesting and I hope you guys found this video helpful as well. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much and for now, pickle out.